Hi, my name is Eric Sauber, attorney from the law office of Eric M. Sauber. I help business owners with employment law and labor law issues. Today I'd like to talk about an issue that many business owners are facing today, and it's a very hot topic in the news, and that is the issue of hiring independent contractors versus employees. Now, if you're in a state where your business is hiring, maybe you're a solopreneur and the workload is too much, you're just starting to reach out and branch out, or if you're an established business that's hiring more and more people, you can congratulate yourself. It means you're doing something right. But in hiring, it's very important to note that there are benefits to hiring independent contractors over employees, but it's very important to make sure that you are correctly classifying those workers. Some of the benefits in hiring an independent contractor to you as a business owner are that you don't have to spend as much money paying into their unemployment insurance, their federal and state taxes, or get workers' compensation coverage for them. However, it's very important to note that if you incorrectly classify a worker as an independent contractor, there could be some penalties. The IRS or the New York State Department of Labor can end up charging you in terms of back wages owed, taxes unpaid, and other penalties and, and costs that you may incur. So I'd like to talk to you about some of the main factors to consider when you're hiring an independent contractor. These are the factors you can essentially check off to know that you're correctly classifying that worker as a freelancer or a consultant. Uh, the first factor to consider is whether or not the worker you're hiring owns and uses their own equipment. So for example, if you're hiring someone to do software coding or computer programming or marketing for your company, make sure they use their own laptop, their own printer, their own phones, etc. You also want to make sure that they pay their own expenses. So when they take a taxi to meet you for a meeting every now and then, or if they're paying for their own equipment, perhaps they're giving some kind of a, thank you, grooming service, make sure they have their own equipment with them. Uh, one of the main factors that is important to note is that an independent contractor should have autonomy and direction and control. They should maximize that when they're working for you. So some of the ways you can guarantee that are by letting the independent contractor make their own schedule to the extent that they can. If they can work from noon to eight or 10 to six, if it makes no difference, make it clear that they're the ones setting those time frames. And you also wanna make sure that you give them permission to work from another location if that's feasible for your business. Some of the other key factors to consider when you're hiring a worker to make sure that they're correctly classified as an independent contractor is to make sure that they're required to not have any restrictions on their appearance, and for the most part, make it known that they're free to accept other jobs and work for other companies. It's also a good idea to have them register their own LLC, S Corp or C Corp, and to invoice you monthly for their services. So these are the main factors that if you follow, you're much more likely to have a correctly classified worker. And that means if the Department of Labor comes knocking on your door, you can point out that the person was properly classified. And last but not least, it's important to memorialize these topics, rather these criteria, in an independent contractor agreement. Now these topics are a guide and it's a complex issue and so you should really consult with a professional before going further. I'm Eric Sauber, Lost Eric M. Sauber. Thank you.